What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Discord Friday. Before we start, I just want to say, guys, that a lot of the weeks that come up are probably just going to be Discord Friday. Uh, I'm going to be working a lot of 12 hour days for the entire year. Uh, so having time to post additional videos besides Discord Friday is going to be a little hard for me. So if I do have fine, uh, time, because I know people want to see me selecting in the warehouse again, if I get the opportunity to do something like that, I will try to get that video out. I promise you, uh, I have to take care of stuff here at the house. And that requires me working a lot of overtime to get that done uh so with that being said guys if you want to join discord please do that great for new selectors to come over there and talk to everybody thumbs up subscribe and if you guys want to help the channel by donating to venmo i appreciate it and guys i'm new to all of this i didn't even know venmo is just strictly in the united states until someone from canada told me they don't have it there and then i googled it and yeah sure is enough it's just you know the other platforms for me to accept donations from out of the country costs money and it's just not worth it for me. <laughs> I, I don't make enough money to be doing that. That's why I ask for donations. Uh, so with that being said, guys, let's get to Discord Friday. All right, so the first thing I wanna go over is I did this. Guys, just something fun. I like to throw up different things every now and then on these surveys. 72% uh, out of, I don't even know, I cut off, um, or no, 121 votes said that they never cried over a star before dying, you know, a celebrity. Uh, me personally, I never have been a starstruck type of person. I literally have walked past Sidney Crosby on the street down in the south side, and I said, hey, Sid, and kept walking. I, I have never been that person to be like starstruck, but I I only cried for one person, which is kind of weird, uh, and I'll tell you who it was out of this list right here. Now, Paul Walker, uh, I was a big Fast and the Furious fan. Uh, he was great in Running Scared. I just thought he was going to be a great actor to come up, uh, so I really was – you know, really shocked whenever I heard how he died. And I think that's a lot of th this list is like how they died is what puts the, you know, if someone died out of a heart attack, it still sucks. But when someone dies tragic, and if you, if you could see my list right here, everybody died tragic on this list, uh, except for Grant, which Grant is the person from Mythbusters that someone brought up. And I used to watch Mythbusters all the time and I never knew he passed away. And then I saw it was from an aneurysm. So that, that was you know, I just found out about him the other day. So Paul Walker, Robin Williams, once again, it's how it happened. He committed suicide. Uh, it sucks. You know, so it's that type of thing. Same with Chester. I was a huge Lincoln Park fan. All right. Absolutely huge. Chris Cornell. I'm a huge fan of Soundgarden and, you know, all that. And I just, uh, yeah, they both, and the, and the hair to story between the two of them, between Chester and, and, and Chris, and they were really good friends. Uh, so that had a lot to play on it. That they both, you know, he hung himself by suicide, obviously, on the birthday of Chris uh, Cornell, who also hung himself. They both, uh, you know, suffer from depression. Long story between those two guys. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm still a huge Lincoln Park fan. I listen to Lincoln Park all the time. And then this is the one I cried over. Uh, I'm not even a basketball fan. I, I could Honestly, I could care less about watching basketball. Uh, but I have seen a, a lot of motivational videos with uh, Kobe in it. And I think it's the the way it happened with the helicopter crash. And it, and it wasn't only for him, but it was for his daughter. And then the other people that were on the helicopter that also had a young girl on there. And, you know... Uh, when you think of a family person, you have kids, you know, oh my God, I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't imagine the spouses of both of those families or even the, you know, the helicopter person. Yeah, I mean, everyone that was involved in that accident. But yeah, seeing Kobe with his daughter's EG all the time. I mean, it's just like, it was heartbreaking, man. It really was. Uh, so, but Kobe, the only one I ever cried over and, uh, and I don't even watch basketball. All right, guys, so this first one, I don't even know if this is the person's order. Uh but I love this, man. <laughs> I don't know how many times people do not select these Capri Suns whenever the tape is, uh, that corner's taped to it. It happens all the time, and people will purposely just skip these. I usually just bat it off, uh, but I love the fact that they use this for a corner. <laughs> I've never thought about doing that before. Hey, it helps keep your line, because as you can see, this person's square all the way around. Uh, other than this gap right here, you know, maybe center cases, which you saw on my one order that I did not uh, center cases as well on the thing. This is a little bit uh, too much of a gap on the bottom of your palette, guys, for the first layer, in my opinion. Uh, other than that, we got a good use of a slip sheet right here. And guys, I tell you all the time, unless you're topping off your palette, you're like even this is, and you have Charmin on its side, believe it or not, it might not 
collapse, but it's enough to start wiggling this product around to fall off. So if you have a long way to drive with this product and you're not wrapping it, like this brawning on its side, this stuff is so soft, guys. Spools up, all right? These cases should always be upright like your Viva. Always upright with your paper towels like this. Don't ever put them on their sides and then put a case on top of them because the lightest case is still going to fall over. Uh, they're just so weak. All right, this one right here, uh, just something a little bit different, guys. A lot of yogurt going out. We got butters and we got coffee creamers and stuff down at the bottom, but just perfectly done. I mean, and honestly, uh, this takes extra time. And I, honestly, I, I'm not going to lie. I probably would do the same thing. I'd probably tie every layer in. For newer selectors, guys, when you get midway, so even about right here, so right here, you can call them stack because we got this nice solid base. And if you want to save a lot of time, you could just call them stack these yogurts right up. They are not going to go anywhere. They are probably one of the few cases that you can call them stack and never have to worry about them. They're not going to go anywhere because they're bigger, flatter boxes. Uh, excuse my voice today, but you know, Column stack from here up is gonna save you a ton of time, but it's still a great looking palette. All right, this one right here, also a nice looking palette. I also, I don't even mind the slip sheet on there. Uh, I, I wouldn't use it, but I don't mind it. Uh, this gap right here is my biggest problem on this palette. Uh, I did have all the way around, I, actually, I think I have your next picture too. I'm not 100% sure, but very strong looking palette, except for this. This is just too much to me. Uh, these spaghettis probably would have been turned in. I would have put two more face in this way. Uh, you know, it seems like this is that level at all costs type of deal. Uh, you know, you want it to be level and sometimes being level at all costs gets you in trouble. But for a base, I mean, you could almost see the whole way through the palette. Uh, that is not a sturdy base whatsoever. Uh, your top is strong, but this base is very weak uh, in the back. And you want your back of your palette to be strong. Uh, this is very sketchy. Uh, so I would definitely work on the gaps on the base. If we're going to have gaps, let's have it up towards the top of our palette, not at the bottom. All right, so we do. This is the back of that palette. Yeah, and you can see now from the back, it looks like you have a solid wall. I mean, this is like perfect. This is how you want to do the back. But that hole going all the way through your palette is uh, basically defeating the purpose of having that strong wall because it is giving you a weak back because of that hole going through. But I mean, you're stacking great. You know, I, I, honestly, I, everything on here is just stacked perfectly, except for that hole going through your palette. All right, this one, I believe this was Cole Wolf. He said, because he is not selecting anymore, which is going to stink because Cole Wolf not only provided us with our first and only interview and provided us with videos that we could watch of him selecting in the warehouse. But he also provides us with pictures of great looking palettes. But in the same aspect, we're happy that you got a forklift and you don't have to, you know, worry about selecting anymore. Because I tell you guys, I think selection should be short lived. And that's exactly what Cole Wolf did. He did it for about a year and a half. Now, thankfully, he said he's going to hang around Discord and still help people out. Uh, that's the kind of person he is. And we really appreciate people like that on Discord. Uh, we got our oils up. They're in the corner. Uh, even though we use the fancy feast on the corner and I'm not a fan, I usually try to hide these inside the palette or put them in the middle of the palette. We have a lot of weight on these fancy feasts where they're not going to slide. Uh, if you were to put a box on top of these fancy feasts, it's probably going to slide right off the palette. But the fact that we got these bakery bags facing in, we're good to go. And then we continued that the whole way. Uh, guys, we got that solid base, so you can get away with column stacking. Now, if this was a full palette of bags, I would have said, hey, we need a tie in somewhere, but we're, you know, just that little bit right there. It's probably like definitely the max where I would call him stack. Uh, but he did tie this bag in here. We got that big dog food bag going back this way. So we did get a tie in. So that's great. But solid base, you can get away with calling stack. And like I said, on the yogurt. All right, guys. So this is my palette. And I just, I, there's things that I have noticed. And someone posted a video saying, hey, uh, I'm following the way you tell me and it's working out for me. And I never knew this until I started doing this channel that I actually do have a routine that I do. And as you can see, guys, one case in, one case in, one case in, one case in, one case in. I forgot to put a two right here, but two light cases back, two light cases back, one in, one in, one in, one in, the whole way up the side, one in, one in, one in. Now, sometimes I don't put cases side by side if I get groups of four like this. So I almost... Like when I get a group of cases like this, I almost act as 
I'm making one case out of two and then putting them together, if that makes sense, when they're small, skinny cases like this. So these little waters, I usually stack them towards the front of my pallet because they're weak cases. So I will double stack them and I still keep them in together in like almost like groups of two. Uh, guys, two cases the same, back, two the same, two the same, one in, two the same, back, one in, one in, and as you can see on the top, two back. It's the way I do it all the time, guys. So let's take a look at the next picture because the next picture is just someone's random picture off of uh, Discord. And I started looking at it and I wanted to see if people are actually following what I say. We got two cases similar together. Now, they don't always have to be facing back, but they do have to be together. It's very important. Two cases the same. Actually, I could have said two similar cases right here. Two similar. We got one, one, one. We got two cases back, one in, two cases the same back, one, one. Definitely following the same concept. Uh, you know, keeping either you keep like cases together or we're going back with them. Now, this doesn't always come into play. Let's say we had two very wide boxes right here. Well, maybe I don't want my second wide box to come all the way into the middle of my pallet. So maybe I'm gonna run them both in like I did with my water. So if I get long, flat boxes, uh, maybe I'm still gonna point them in because they give me a stronger corner that way. So it all depends on the size of the case. And usually it's the sizes like this, it's something that's gonna definitely work on our corner. All right, guys, so I wanna end with a couple pictures I took in the warehouse now. A lot of people say they struggle with the middle of their palette. Guys, center it. That is all you have to do. People make too much out of this. Just center the case in the gap and call it a day. This is when I say you do not have to fill in every single hole on your palette, especially in the middle part here. Just center the case and keep moving on. All right, this is that same order. This is the, another thing I wanna show you. So here's the part of the pallet I don't like. I don't like putting cases like this in this part of the pallet. I like pointing cases inwards, and this is why. These two arrows are pointing to two different layer, uh, levels. So I'm giving myself two levels. Well, what the heck am I gonna put here? If I find something to put here, it's gonna be hanging into this gap right here. So more than likely, it's gonna lean. Now look down here, when I face that case in, now I got one level to worry about. I don't have to worry about this inside level anymore, that's gonna destroy the middle of my pallet. So when you put cases this way, unless you're level the whole way across, it doesn't work because you're gonna be fumbling around with the middle of your pallet and it's just not gonna work out well. When you point cases in, not only am I eliminating those different levels, I am also giving myself a stronger pallet. All right guys, so that's it for Discord Friday. Remember, uh, so these Friday videos might be a little bit longer than usual since I'm gonna be cramming everything into one video. Uh, but like I said, I am gonna be working a ton of overtime. I'm, I already started. I'm already working my 12 hour days for about six weeks now, uh, but now I'm gonna be picking it up to five days a week. I was just doing it like three days a week. Now I'm gonna pick it up to five days a week and I have a lot of stuff I need to do. So that's it guys. I thank you guys for joining. If you're new to the channel, I welcome you and I'll see you guys next Friday. Have a good one.